Welcome back. This is Mrs. Rubray with Advanced Geometry. Today's lesson is 4-5, Proof Triangles Congruent by Side, Angle, Side, and Hypotenuse Leg. You are supposed to begin by copying the four-year notebooks on pages 238 and 239, so we should have done that already. <clears throat> All right, so use the Side, Angle, Side, Congruence postulate. So on this one, they gave us that BC is congruent to DA, so let's mark that. BC is congruent to DA. Then they said that BC is parallel to AD. So this is what they told us so far. So those are our statements. Ooh, or not. Let's ungroup those. All right, so those are our statements. And our reasons are they were given, okay? So based on the fact that they're parallel, what does that tell us? That tells us that this angle in here and this angle in here are congruent alternate interior angles, right? So, angle B, sorry, angle BCA, BCA is congruent to angle DAC, and that is because of alternate interior angles. Is there anything else that we know? So we have this angle, we have this side. Anything else that we know? Looking at the picture. Do you guys see something else? Yes. Side AC is congruent to side CA. How do we know that? Reflexive. Good. So now we have side, angle, side. Therefore, the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. So what's important about this is that the angle has to be the angle sandwiched between the two sides, the included angle. So you guys see how these are the two equal sides, the two congruent sides? The angle has to be the included angle between those two sides. Make sense? You guys okay? All right. So in the diagram, Segment QS and segment RP pass through the center M of the circle. What can you conclude about triangle MRS and triangle MPQ? Well, if they pass through the center, what do you know? You know that this and this are equal Y. They're radii, right? Doesn't the center bisect a diameter into two radius, like two radii? So these are also equal, and they're all equal to each other because they're all radii. So, um, we know side, side, right? They have a side in common, they have a side in common, so we know side, side so far. Looking at the picture, is there anything else that I know? How about vertical angles? This angle is congruent to this angle because vertical angles are congruent. When two lines intersect, the angles opposite each other are vertical angles. They are congruent. So now we have side, angle, side. The two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Make sense? In the diagram, A, B, C, D is a square with four congruent sides and four right angles. R, S, T, and U are the midpoints of the sides of A, B, C, D. Also, RT is perpendicular to SU, and SU is congruent to VU. All right, that's a lot of information. So what did they give us so far? They gave us that SV is congruent to VU. Well, let's look. SV is congruent to VU. That's a typo. Okay. Right? That was given. What else did they give us? They gave us this. We're going to have to write that somewhere. But let's see what they did so far. SVR, SV, where's V? SVR, this angle right here, is congruent to RVU. Well, didn't they tell us that these were all right angles? Definition of perpendicular. They said it was perpendicular, right? They should have wrote Okay, so this textbook just is not that not the greatest. They should have also wrote this right here, right? As your givens, right? Because then they're equal y definition of perpendicular, right? 
they should list that they're perpendicular before using the definition of the word that they didn't actually put in their given. All right, so then what? So we know those are, are the good, those are good. What else? We're trying to prove SVR, so SVR. We're trying to prove this triangle and this triangle are congruent. So, so far we have a side and an angle. What else do we know? How about this shared side? RV is congruent to RV, why? Reflexive. All right, so they're reversing RV and VR. They shouldn't have. Look at the, look at the proof statement. VR, VR, they're written in the same order. They should be written in the same order here. Your textbook publishers are not the greatest, so be careful with that. Okay? They should be written in corresponding positions. So now that we know that they are congruent, why are they congruent? Because of side, angle, side. How are you guys starting to feel about proofs? Are they getting easier? Yeah? Good. Write a proof. All right, so there are statements and our reasons, right? So you're going to have point one. You're going to write all this, and your reason is what? Give it. Okay, so let's see what this is. This whole part is congruent to... <clears throat> this whole side, right? They gave us that. They gave us that WZ is perpendicular to this. So if it's perpendicular, then that's what we know. And it says that this is perpendicular to this. So to step two, we're going to write angle WZY is congruent to, or is a right angle. And angle X, Y, Z is a right angle, right? We say that they're right angles. Why? Definition of perpendicular. Then you can say that they're equal to each other. Right angles, the right angles theorem, right? Right angles congruence. So now you have a side and an angle, right? You need something else. Do you guys see how this bottom part is on both of them? ZY is congruent to YZ. Reflexive. All right, so now we have side, angle, side. But here's the problem. Do you guys see how this is angle? Side, side, A, S, S, A, S, S, curse word. There's no button math. You can't do A, S, S or A, S, S backwards. There's no cursing in math. Does everyone hear me? So when you have a curse word, frontwards or backwards, A, S, S or S, S, A, you can't do it. But if it's a right triangle, then you do have a get out of jail free card, and it is your hypotenuse leg. So if it's a right triangle and you have the hypotenuse, you have the hypotenuse and a leg that are congruent, then they are congruent by hypotenuse leg. So if it's a curse word, the only get out of jail free card is if it's a right triangle and you have hypotenuse leg, then they are congruent by hypotenuse leg. So you go straight to your proof statement, and your reason is HL, hypotenuse leg. All right, so here you go. This is what it basically did, right? So they're right angles, therefore they're congruent, right? They went to the, them being right triangles, same thing. Um, and you have the reflexive, so they are congruent by hypotenuse leg. All right, so looking at the next one. You are making a canvas sign to hang on the triangular wall over the door to the barn shown in the picture. You think you can use two identical triangular sheets of canvas, you know that RP is perpendicular to QS and that PQ is congruent to PS. What postulate or theorem can you use to conclude that the triangles are congruent? So let's look at what we have so far. So we have RP is perpendicular to QS. RP is perpendicular to QS. So that means that these are 90 degrees. So we have an angle so far, right? PQ is congruent to PS. So now we have a side and an angle. 
Anything else we know in the diagram that's not marked? Yeah. RP is congruent to RP because of reflexive. So now we have side, angle, side. These two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Done. Alright, so redraw triangle ACB and triangle DBC side by side with corresponding parts in the same position. Alright, so we have two right triangles. C, B, D. And the other one was A, your right angle. Nope, messed up already. My right angle was at B, right? <coughs> the C is the top and the A goes here, right? And this had that. So I kind of just turned this over. Make sense? So that they both are in the same positions. All right, so then um, what do they want us to do? They just want us to redraw it? Okay. So you can see that angle C is... Like if these are in, if these are congruent and they're in the same positions. Um, oh, so before we redraw two, this could help. The fact that BC is congruent to BC, why? Reflexive. So this has two marks, this has two marks, and it kind of just helps you. So between two marks and one mark is C. Yep. Between two marks and one marks is B. So C and B should be in the same spot. You know that the B and um, is the right angle here and the C is the right angle there. So it kind of tells you exactly where everything should be. So now you can say with 100% certainty that triangle CBA is congruent to triangle BCD. Does that make sense? It just kind of helps you if you redraw it to know what goes in the same corresponding positions as each other. And that is everything on your lesson on 4.5, proving triangles congruent by side angle side and hypotenuse leg. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.